Hello, my name is Evan, and I built this cannon back in 1993. And it's a sort of different kit take on the design of an air cannon. So in order to fire this, first you open the air, air line coming in, close it off, and then open this one to fire. Maybe you guys can figure out how it works before I describe its features. So charging. We're at 120 pounds, 130 PSI. One. Okay, so the design is, is uh, intended to get as much power in that projectile as possible given the amount of error and pressure we have stored. So if you look at a normal air cannon, the problem is that you have a valve that opens at a certain rate. And so as the valve is sort of slowly opening in comparison to how fast the air is going to move, then the projectile actually can start moving down the barrel before the full pressure of what's in your tank actually pushes against projectile and gets it out. So you sort of lose quite a bit depending on how the design is worked. So I came up with a design that addresses that problem. And the sort of second thing is that whenever you do these designs, the amount of force on some of your components can be really big. And so this also addresses that because really there are only a few parts in here that have a lot of mechanical force on it. And I've sort of used the valves as triggers, or the valve as a trigger to address that. So to reload, you know, undo this big nut here, which holds, the, holds on the barrel, slide it out. And then there's a block right here. And if you look, it has an O-ring on that surface, an O-ring on that surface, and actually has a little steel insert on the center. Then what you'll see is this is sort of the trick. So this is a piece of uh, aluminum sheet that was there beforehand that didn't have the hole. So <laughs> here's my replacement for the next shot. Put that in there. Then this seals on that front surface and around the sides. And then we put a soda can and a piece of wadding. And the reason I'm doing the piece of wadding is because that little disc in there that gets punched out actually is traveling at high velocity and it'll put a hole in the bottom of the can. And I like the can to be full when it hits the target. So I'll just use that as a little padding, essentially. Put my can in here, close it, and lock the barrel on again. So I designed this thing to take 1,000 PSI. It's uh, essentially half inch, half inch steel on the, on, the, uh, on the tank. And however, I've only actually fired it to 500. And right now we're just running off a compressor that's at about 130 psi or so. So again, it's uh, ready to fire. This time, instead of just punching a hole through plywood, I actually have it facing a, a piece of paver stone. And we'll see what that one looks like. With my, oh, also some other features. Um, this is a pivot about the center and it's kind of close to the center of uh, mass. So it's easy to aim and it nicely pivots from side to side. So in this case, I can pretty easily aim it. And we're good to go. One interesting result from this, uh, from these little shots, um, I expected the soda cans to get shredded in interesting 
so detailed way. And you even get this cool pattern here where the shape of the of the concrete has been imprinted on the aluminum. But to actually have the splatter from the soda can punch a hole in the top of the table, that was kind of interesting. Okay, so let's talk about features. The barrel is two and five eighths diameter, which is perfect size for tennis balls, soda cans, and maybe oranges, but they come apart at, at uh, higher pressures, uh, more than about 70 pounds. Anyway, so then, as you saw the loading, each time I have to load in one of these discs, so this I'm choosing about 25 thousandths, and, uh, and that um, dumps it out pretty well. The farthest I've gone is with a pressure of 500 pounds, and uh, as, as you might know, uh, if you don't have a decent projectile, things like baseballs or other things tend to take hard left turns or right turns when they exit the barrel. Um, and so I made uh, something, that a projectile that looks sort of like a mortar shell with a big slug of aluminum in the front and then pla PVC plastic behind with fins. And, uh, and that worked pretty well. That um, at a 45 degree angle, I had a hang time of about 14 seconds, 14 and a half seconds. So. Um, that was probably around, you know, whatever, 70 meters per second horizontal and 70 meters per second up at that time. And a total range of about 1,000 meters, which is pretty cool for about a two pound slug of uh, aluminum. Anyway, so then the question is, okay, how does this actually work? And as you might have guessed from the hole in this nice piece of aluminum, this is actually a punch and die sort of setup or it's not exactly a burst diaphragm uh, air cannon, but actually sort of more like a punch cannon or something like that. So inside here, there's a piston. It looks sort of like this. And that piston's on the inside of this uh, canister here. It's about a half inch wall thick. And then when I let in the air, there's a, a hole here with a little flappy valve on the back that fills up the tank. And then if you want to come around and see, you can see I have a, uh, gauge here to tell me uh, what the pressure is in the main tank and that pushes the and that pushes the piston back slightly and then once it's back like that I turn off the air going into the cannon and then when I open this side this flappy thing is generally closed I open that and this gets shoved forward by all of that mass in this whole surface area the center is a big hole cut out that goes through to the, there's a tip on here, which is a cylinder, which punches out the hole in the, in the aluminum. And so then as soon as it, so what happens is instead of a valve opening slowly or anything like that, just in a very short period of time, since the face of that uh, die is flat, it punches the hole through the, through the aluminum and all of the air immediately flows out. Now, to make things better, I have a little cone the inside of here is cone necking down to the diameter, so it tries to get decent flow, but uh, it seems to work pretty good. So from a pressure range, uh, this 25 thousandths aluminum pretty much is okay all the way up to about almost about 500 pounds per square inch. And then it'll, because of the surface area of the piston, it'll fire it as low as about 20 pounds per square inch. And uh, so it's been really reliable over the last almost 30 years. Um, and uh, it almost like never fails to, to show. Hope you enjoyed the little presentation.